Dougie Lampkin, for the past three years, both outdoor and indoor world trials champion. Probably the most skilled motorcyclist in the world today, as this discipline requires the rider to tackle frightening obstacles, but demands that he keeps his feet off the floor. Shit, look at that. Well, it's not a though, is it? Nothing your mum can't fix. The huge rocks and variable skies of Addingham Moorside are very familiar to Dougie. Just across the road from his Silsden home, this is his practice ground. He shall next be competing in Sheffield as he brings in the new year by beginning the defence of his indoor world crown. Meanwhile, down in the valley, Dougie's dad is hard at work in preparation for the very same night. This year, which is our fifth year, I've been spending five months building, designing, and also we've had quite a lot of sections made outside this year. We've had outside contractors making the castor oil bottles. We already had the embassy boxes from last year. But we have seven sections this year and four of, four of them are new. So a hell of a lot of work. My job is to organise the riders, who I all know personally, make the sections and make sure that the sections are cleanable on the night. Very, very difficult, but if everybody fived the first set, set the first step of a section that we uh, had spent two months building, it wouldn't be very good for the 8,000 people watching. Arthur Lampkin, now well in the lead. Study his determination and masterly control. Alan Lampkin, a good fast climb. And the next brother along the line of champions, Martin. World Trials Champion in 1975, Dougie's dad was a real star. The subsequent emergence of Dougie as champion himself was almost inevitable. And the balance of a tight rope walker and muscles of steel. And this is another of John Lampkin's nephews, young Dougie Lampkin, who's 15 from just north of Birmingham or Keighley in West Yorkshire, whichever is the nearer. And uh, he's ridden that very nicely. That's a good start, you know, we've just got to, to hope it carries on. Next year moving on to the adult ranks. We all better watch out. Hopefully in the World Championship, I'll be in, inside the top ten and hopefully just carry on how I'm going with the British Championship. I would like uh, Dougie Lampkin please to step up and Obviously I want to go on to win the World Championship over and over again and the British Championship, everything, just keep winning. But I mean, it's hard to live up to but it's like I'll just give it 100% for as long as I can. When Dougie won his first World Cham Championship event in Halton Towers in '94 near Manchester, I mean, I think that was very, very special for Dougie and, and uh, for all of his team. Dougie Lampkin's second place for the second day running means that he has an uncatchable lead of 47 points over Colum A with one round still remaining. Dougie Lampkin is the 1997 World Trials Champion. A dream come true for the 21-year-old Yorkshireman from Silsden. Last year, Dougie made it a hat-trick of double championship wins. He's breaking every record that can possibly be broken and surpassing all hopes and dreams that both he and his family maintained. The latest Lampkin is still improving and already he is truly amazing. Even I've started to admire him. I knew he was good, 
I didn't think he had the dedication to go on year after year after year. I don't think any of us can say enough, really. I mean, we're all very, very proud of him. Um, and I think, you know, ever since he, he really started in schoolboy trials, or when he, he won his first European Championship, and then went on to winning the World Championship, I mean, he just seems to have gone from strength to strength. His work rate is phenomenal, and that is why I, I'm so proud of him, that he gives it 100%. He'll practice three, four, five hours every day. Not when he feels like it. It's like a job to him. Uh, and he's reaping the rewards now, and good luck to him. Now, Dougie is astride a new bike for the new millennium. But before he can debut the sparkling Montessa, Martin and his team must first haul the tons of obstacles down the M1. The monster tyres, the huge logs, the masses of steel boxes and cylinders must all be unloaded as quickly as they were initially piled onto the trucks. Just two days to prepare the arena and it's intricate work. The, uh, the sections to the uh, ordinary person maybe don't look so special but everything's measured very very closely. We know the exact width that a bike will go on, the wheelbase, the height that the, of a step that they'll go up, what they'll span, how far they'll jump, and everything has to be taken into consideration. It isn't a matter of getting a load of old rubbish like you can see in this yard and sticking it together. Everything is finely tuned months before we get there. But does Martin not fail to be designing some kind of motorsport death trap? Yes, there is a, a great deal of danger in the sections, there's no doubt about it. Unfortunately, one of the Japanese riders last year broke his wrists. In my event, something I'm not happy about at all, but uh, there are a, quite a few injuries in indoor trials and it's something that the riders know before they start. They all inspect the sections and if there's nothing, if there's something they're not happy about, we are quite prepared to change it. But uh, it's just one of those things that you can fall off a bus and break your leg. Unfortunately, you did it on some of my sections. Amid the chaos, Dougie finds time to relax and evaluate the task ahead. Yeah, it's definitely um, one of the biggest of the, the year. It's obviously the first round of the World Championship. Um, it's the first one in a new season. Everybody's been training hard over the winter and this is where it all happens really. So uh, it's certainly an advantage if we get off to a good start. I haven't had too long to get used to my new bike, but uh, I'm hopeful that I can have a good result uh, in Sheffield and hopefully win. I know your dad goes on about me saying it's too hard. That looks fucking hard to me. Huh? Just because it's up there. That's funny. Break up it alive. Does everything flatten out when you crack your leg over that bike? Your bloody camera will flatten out in a minute. <laughs> Saturday night and the arena starts to fill. The crowd is here for one man. I think Dougie will definitely win. Are you saying I'm quite confident? No, I think we will, yeah. As long as there's no problems with the bike, yeah. He's done it before, I'll keep on doing it, I think. Doggy. Because I, I think he's, he's simply the best. Doggy. Lampkin. Doggy. <laughs> I've met him earlier in the snack bar over the road. He signed me a photograph, so I'm very really pleased on that. Does this amount of support benefit the champion? I could do without the pressure, just at a minute. New bad new team and everything, but it uh, shouldn't be a problem. Obviously when you come out of the sessions and you can hear the cheering, that's when uh, like the hairs on the back of your neck stand out. But Strong competition is expected to come from ex-British champion 
arch rival, Manxman Steve Colley. Looking around the sections, it looks really difficult again. But uh, I think every year at Sheffield it does. All the riders have had three weeks off. You come around and look at the Sheffield sections and it's a bit, it's a bit scary. But uh, luckily I'm not first out. We've got Martin Crossway and a few others before us. So I think Dougie and I are in a good position. Uh, Dougie's like obviously last to go, I'm third to last. So we can see the other riders go before us and uh, make our decisions then. Um, when I get out there with the adrenaline and the public, when they get behind me, it's amazing what you can do. Um, I've got quite an aggressive riding style. Obviously it's a lot easier to find grip indoor than outdoor. And, uh, and I've always excelled indoors. But, uh, I had a good year outdoor last year, uh, fifth outdoor, third indoor, so I'm still a little bit better indoor than outdoor, but uh, it's changing slightly. Top Gear's motorbike expert, Steve Berry, is the compare for the evening show. The fans are noisy and excited. Once Dougie makes his flamboyant entrance, we're ready for the real action to commence. Dougie leads after the heats. The top four go into the final and start from scratch of the obstacles in the reverse direction. Collie starts very well, just a single mark behind Dougie. Graham Jarvis and Spanish ace Mark Colomb both struggle on the descent and lose touch with the leaders. To the crowd's delight, Dougie, determined as ever, follows Collie and also cleans the tough cigarette packet. Nobody has difficulty with the castle bottles in this direction, except Dougie. As the big screen shows, Doug lost his balance at the summit and surrendered his lead to Collie. In a very tricky deciding section, Collie hands Dougie an opportunity to regain the lead. With the raucous crowd behind him, Dougie shows his steel and rides a majestic clean. He only needs to finish second in a two-man race to once again be crowned the King of Sheffield and the master of his sport. The 1990s saw Dougie grow from a promising schoolboy into a champion who dominates his sport at the highest level. His rivals must be quaking in their boots, for Dougie shows no signs of losing his desire to be the best. Motorcycle trials in this new decade could belong to Dougie Lampkin. <laughs> 